All right, so this is an extended response question sent to me by a year 12 specialist maths student. Um, so yeah, it's a good exam two style question. So let's have a look at the context. This container has a has an open rectangular horizontal top. So this is open, parallel vertical ends. So everything here is parallel. The ends are parabolic, so this is a parabola. It looks like a semicircle, but by definition in the question, it's a parabola. X and Y intercepts intercept at the origin, with X being horizontal and Y being vertical. And we are symmetric, so this side is equal to this side, and that, that comes into it again later. The dimensions are shown on the diagram, so we have our dimensions here. First thing we're asked to do is find the equation of the parabola at QOP. So that's this parabola here. So let's draw it zoomed in and changed in ratio a little bit. And now let's find this parabola. So the turning point is at the origin. So we know straight away that we are of the form y equals ax squared. We sub in our relevant point, our piece of information. So this point here, all the way across is 20. Therefore, from the middle to the edge is 10. And our height is 40. So we know we have the point 10, 40, which we can sub in. So we get 40 equals a times 10 squared. 40 is 100 a. I'm just going to cancel those, that, those um, multiples of 10 out straight away, and I'm going to get a equals 4 on 10, which is 2 on 5. So my equation is y equals 2 on 5x squared. All right. Next question. Water is poured into the container. Find the equation for the volume of the water in terms of y. So I've drawn this cross section here. And what we want for volume, we want this area. And we want to multiply it by that. Now, if you've got your methods brain on, you're going to be tempted, as I was when I first saw this, to draw a rectangle and then subtract what is underneath to get this area. That is not a good idea because we are asked to do this in terms of V and Y, not V and X. So we have to do this with Y. So what we're going to do instead of going across, we're actually going to go up. So we're going to find this area directly by traveling up the Y axis. Okay. Now, let's first define our volume. Our volume is that area times 60. So our depth is 60. And the volume of any prism is the area of the cross section multiplied by its height. So now we need to find this area. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say that my y value is equal to 2 fifths x squared. All right, so that's what I found earlier. And I'm going to rearrange this to be its inverse. So this will give me x equals 5 on 2y, and I take the square root of everything. So I can write that as root 5 on root 2, y to the half. And that becomes root 10 on 2, y to the half. Okay, looks like a zero for y. All right, so give yourself give yourself a second to to see kind of what's going on there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to remember that y is the depth. So I'm going to use a parameter. I'm going to say that 
the length across is equal to root 10 to, and I'm just going to say h to the half for where h is the height. And I'm going to solve a integral for the area. Remember, I'm looking for traveling up the axis. I'm looking for this area between the curve and the y axis. So the integral I'm going to find, so the area I'm caring about, is root 10 on 2, the integral from 0 to the depth of the water, h to the 1 on 2 to h. And I'm going to multiply all of that by 2. So why am I multiplying it by 2? Because this gives me this area here, and multiplying it by 2 will give me everything. It also makes it a little bit nicer, so I'm pretty happy about it. So I'm going to get area is root 10 integral from 0 to y, h to the half to h, where h is just the whatever the height is. Okay, and y will give me the depth of water. Right? So h is just the convenient parameter. It's not, you could use any letter if you wanted to mix it up. Okay, so let's do our anti-differentiation. So a is equal to root 10. I have my Riemann sum, the antiderivative of h to the half. So I get h to the half plus 1 over half plus 1. So that becomes h, that becomes h to the 3 on 2, 2 thirds from 0 to y. I can take these out the front, which is nice. So I get 2 root 10 on 3, h to the 3 halves from 0 to y. So that becomes root 10 on 3, y to the 3 halves. So that's my area. Therefore, my volume, which is area times 60, so I get 2 root 10 on 3 times 60, y to the 3 on 2, and that simplifies to 40 root 10, y to the 3 on 2. And this is my equation for my volume. All right, what's next? Calculate, to the near, calculate the depth to the nearest millimeter when the container is half full. Okay, so the depth when the container is half full. The first thing I need to do is find the volume when it's full. So it's for C, so first I need to, to find the volume. I need to find the volume in order to, you know, find half the volume. Find the volume. So I can do a lot of different things, but volume it means, so when the volume is full, so the volume full happens when y equals 40. Okay. So volume full is equal to 40 root 10 y to the 3 on 2. And y in this case was 40. Okay. So that gives me 40 root 10. Now, 40 to the 3 on 2 is the square root of 40 cubed. And that will be 40 root 40. which I can simplify down to 80 root 10. So this guy equals 40 root 10 times 80 root 10, which comes out with a bit of calculator skills as 32,000 centimeters squared. Therefore, the half is 16,000. 
So to find the depth for half the volume, I need to solve 16,000 equals the equation for my depth. And cancel that multiple of 10 straight away. I get now y to the 3 on 2 equals 1600 over 4 root 10 and that simplifies down to 400 over root 10. I'm going to square everything. I've just put that in so that we know we're doing it as well. I'm not going to calculate this because it's the same as this. So I'm going to get y cubed is 16, 160,000, sorry, over 10, which is 16,000. So y is the cubed root of 16,000, which is approximately 25.2 centimeters. Okay. So it's more than halfway up, gives me half the volume. All right, what's next? So water is poured into the container so that its depth increases at a rate of 60 cubic centimeters per second. Find the y dt. So I know how fast liquid is going in, and I want to find the rate of change of the height. So I can need to write down what information I have and what information I want. So this is d. So I'm given that the V to T is 60 centimeters cubed per second. I know that V is 40 root 10 y to the 3 on 2. What I want is the Y to T. So I'm going to use the chain rule because the Y to T will be the V to T times the Y to V. So if I differentiate this guy, I'm going to get the V to Y, and then I can take, take the reciprocal. So the V to Y is, so the V to Y is 40 root 10, the constant stays there. I multiply it by the old power, and I subtract one from the new power. So that simplifies to 60 root 10 Y to the half. So now I know the y to v. The y to v is 1 over 60 root 10 y to the half. So the y to t is the v to t times the y. That's terrible to v. So is this one. I'm going to fix that. So that becomes 60 times 1 on 60 root 10 y to the half. And these 60s cancel really nicely. So I get the y to t equals 1 on root 10 y to the half. Okay. Now I'm asked to solve this differential equation. Okay. So I'm been asked to solve it. So the first thing I need to do is assert that y at 0 equals 0. So that means initially empty. And now I'm going to have to use my ability to solve differential equations. So when I'm solving a DE, I need this variable on the bottom of the, the derivative to be the same as the variable I am integrating around. So this doesn't work, okay? The t and the y and y are different. So I need to take the reciprocal. So I get to t to y equals root 10 y to the half. And from here, I can say that t is the integral, chuck that root 10 out the front, of y to the half to y. Therefore, t is 
root 10, y, the old power plus 1, divided by the new power. So I get t equals 2 root 10 on 3, y, to the 3 on 2. All right, then I want to know how long it will take to get to 20 centimeters and how long will it take, how much, how much longer again will it take to fill up? So how long will it take to get to half this height? And this is a nice little substitution. So this is for D. I'm looking for T given Y equals 20. So that becomes 2 root 10 on 3, 20 to the 3 halves. I'm going to put this in my calculator. This is approximately 189 seconds. You can put that into minutes if you want. I tend not to. Now I need to know how long it takes to fill. So that becomes 22 root 10 on 3 times 40 to the 3 on t. And that comes out to 533 seconds. So from half to full is 533 minus 189, which is 344 seconds. All right. So the tricky bits with this question, first you need to recognize that you can use relatively simple setups for this parabola. Then you need to give yourself permission to go up the y-axis rather than what methods kids like to do, which is move across the x-axis. Right, you need to define a parameter for your depth because your whatever your depth of water is will be that y value. Solve that. You need to remember the formula for the volume of a prism. It's very useful. And then it's a matter of manipulating the formulas you have found. So understanding the setup, so the, the dish was 40 centimeters high. So that's where that y value comes from. Notice that half the volume is not the same as halfway up. All right, so give yourself some time to think about why that might be the case. Then we can do what we can use related rates to find a different metric. So we can measure depth rather than volume because those two things move in proportion to each other, which is really handy. We can then find a new relationship that gets us new information about how long it takes to half fill and then how much longer it takes to fill from there. Think about why these two are not the same. I went halfway up and then the, the next half took longer, but the rate didn't change. So think about why that happened. All right, I hope this was useful. Good luck.